Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to Lesson 13.4, Find Unknown Measures. This will be on page 253 in your Go Math book. Our essential question for tonight is, how can you find an unknown measure of a rectangle given its area or perimeter? Please go ahead and turn in your Go Math book to page 253, and let's begin. Just like our essential question said, we're going to be finding the unknown measure of the rectangle. Well, what we'll be doing, boys and girls, is we have to use some clues that are given to us. For example, here we have a couple clues. I know that my base, or the length, is 20 feet long, but I don't know the width of this rectangle. I do have a clue, though. It says that the entire perimeter will be 54 feet. Remember, perimeter means the distance around my rectangle. So if my perimeter is 54 feet, and I know this bottom length is 20 feet, then I know that my top will be 20 feet as well because it's a rectangle. So now it's going to get closer to our answer. We know the entire distance around this rectangle will be 54 feet. That is the clue that's given to me. I know I already have 20 and 20, so I have to find the length of these two sides. But remember, they're going to be the same because it is a rectangle. So here's what I know so far. I have 54 total feet around my rectangle. I've already used up 20 and 20. Combined, that equals 40. So I'm just going to subtract that from the 54 feet of my perimeter. And what is left is 14 feet. Now I have to divide that 14 feet between this side and this side. They're going to be the same length. So what plus what equals 14? Or 14 divided by 2 is what? Well, we know our factors of 14, and we know 7 times 2 is 14. Therefore, the length that we have will be 7 feet. Now, let's just check it to, just to be sure. I've got 20 times 2 for my length, and 7 times 2 for the width, so it'll be 40 plus 14, which will equal a perimeter of 54 feet. Now notice we didn't say squared feet. That's because we're finding the distance around my rectangle, not the square units that would be inside for the area. So all we would say is 54 feet, and that's what my original number was. Therefore, 7 is the correct unknown measure. So using that same strategy that we just did on the last one, let's go ahead and look at question two. It says my entire perimeter around this whole rectangle is going to be 42 meters. What do we know so far? We know this length would be nine meters. Therefore, let's go ahead and take our pencils and write nine meters on this side because we know on a rectangle that these two measurements will be congruent. They'll be the same. Now we have to find our unknown measure for this side and for the bottom side and the top side, which is our length. So let's go ahead and take what we know so far, which is our beginning 42 meters, which is our distance around our rectangle. We're going to subtract what we have so far, which will be 9 and 9. 9 times 2 is 18. So will you do me a favor and subtract 18 from 42 along with me in your book? All right, when you subtract, you're going to have 24 meters left over. So now we have to ask ourselves, I have to split up 24 between this side and this side. So think of your factors, 24 divided by 2. So 2 times what is 24? Go ahead and write it down in your paper or in your book, and I'm going to go ahead and fill it in, and you probably will write it before I do. You should say 12 and 12, because 12 times 2 is 24. Now, if my length is truly 12 meters, then we will be correct. Let's go ahead and check it. It's always good to check ourselves, especially in these type of problems. All right, so my length we have is 12 times 2 plus our width is 9 times 2. So 12 times 2 is 24 
and our width is 18. So 24 plus 18 needs to equal our original 42. Let's see if that it totally works. Look at that. And that's how you find your unknown length of a rectangle's perimeter. Now for question three, we're gonna talk about how do you find one of the sides when you're looking for area? So for question number three, our job is to find the area of this rectangle. Now remember, we learned that area is base times height will equal your area. So we wanna know that how to get the area. Well, we know our base is gonna be four centimeters, so we have to figure out what is the height to get our area. And our area is 28 squared centimeters. So four times what is 28? What will be the height? Well, let's look. Oh my goodness, it looks like I have a lightsaber again. And there's Casey. Oh, she's come to join me. Okay, get out of here. Get out of here. Thank you. Okay, back to you guys. Okay, so if we have four centimeters is our base and our height is going to be what to equal 28 square centimeters? You all should have written in your book seven centimeters to be the height. And that will give you a total of 28 square centimeters. Here's why. As you can see, we have four centimeters across. That means one, two, three, four centimeters. And if we have seven going up, which would be my height, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we were to count up every single one of these square units, it would be four times seven is 28 because that is the formula for finding the area. Remember, area is how many square units will cover the rectangle. So it's just that easy when you're trying to find the unknown measure of a rectangle for area. I'll be back. Okay, let's go to the next one. We're gonna use the same strategy that we did on the last one for this. Remember, to find the area, our formula is base times height will equal your area. And here it tells me my area is going to be 200 square inches. So I do know my height, which is 25 inches. So we have our base times 25 is going to equal 200. So really we're saying what times 25 equals 200. Now, again, this will be really hard for me to draw 200 little square units inside this rectangle. That's why it's important to know how to find using multiplication. So I'm going to say 25 times what will equal 200 because 200 would be the total area for square inches. Well, I know using quarters, whenever I think about 25, I know four quarters equals 100 because I know 25 times four would equal 100. Because remember, four times 25 is 100. Well, if I'm looking for 200, then I'm just going to double my four. So it'll be 25 times eight. Let's check it just to be sure. 25 times 8, remember when we regroup, 8 times 5 is 40, 8 times 2 tens is 16 tens, plus 4 more would be 20 tens, and that does equal 200. So our base would have to be 8 inches, and we just proved that that works because 200 square inches is the actual area. Okay, boys and girls, here's my way to know if you actually watched the video for homework tonight. Get your pencils ready. I want you to circle number four. Just put a circle right around the number four, and you're going to make it a flower. So I want you to make little petals going around it, and then I want you to make a little stem on it. All right, this way when they glance at your homework, I can tell if you watched the video. All right, let's go on to number five. Okay, boys and girls, let's look at our word problem. And I want you to underline the clue words with me so we know what we're doing. It says Susie is an organic vegetable grower. The perimeter of her rectangular vegetable garden is 72 yards. The width of the vegetable garden is nine yards. How long is the vegetable garden? So we are looking for perimeter, 
All right, I'm gonna circle the word perimeter. Remember, perimeter means the distance around a rectangle or a shape. So let's go ahead, somewhere off to the side of this question, I want you to draw a rectangle, and we're looking for the perimeter. Remember, that means the distance around your rectangle. All right, not the area on the inside. So our formula will be our two lengths times our two, plus our two widths. So let's go ahead and let's fill in what we know. We know the total perimeter is going to be 72 yards, but we know that the width is going to be 9 yards. So will you do me a favor and make a 9 on both sides of your width? And our job is to figure out what is going to be the length of each side. All right, we know the total is 72. We know 9 plus 9 is 18. So we really have 18 plus what? equals 72. We have to figure out what is going to be our missing length. Remember though, there's two of them. So I want you to pause the video and try to work this one out on your own. How are you going to figure out what this missing number is? All right, and then you're going to have to make sure that you divide it into two to share between the two lengths. Go ahead and pause your video now. Now this one was a little bit more tricky, and but you can still do it using the formula I taught you on the first couple questions. To get this unknown number, you have to do 72 minus 18, and you should have received 54. Now, so 18 plus 54 will equal 72. Now, boys and girls, you cannot put 54 to be the length, because then that would be 54 plus 54 plus 9 plus 9, and that's going to get you over 100. Remember, we have to split up the 54 between this length and this length. So then you're just going to say 54 divided by 2, or what plus what equals 54. Well, you guys know how to divide, so let's go ahead and set up our problem as 54 divided by 2. And using repeated subtraction, we can do that. 54, I'm going to minus 20, which will be 10 groups of 2. And I still have 34 left over. I can take away another group of 20, which is 10 groups of 2. And now I have 14 left. Well, I know I can take away 14, which will be 7 groups of 2. And now I have nothing left over. So both of those sides would be 27. Let's plug in 27 up here and down here, and let's see if it works. 27 plus 27 is 54. 9 plus 9 is 18. And together, it equals 72. Now, this problem did take a while. However, this is how you would figure out that unknown length. Okay, so for question number six, it says an artist is creating a rectangular mural for the Northfield Community Center. The mural is going to be seven feet tall. So will you do me a favor and make a rectangle next to this question? And I want you to make the number seven going up because it's seven feet tall. Now the total area is going to be 84 square feet. What is going to be the length of this mural? Remember our formula for area. We're looking for area. If you remember the formula for area, you should know it's base times your height will equal your area, which we have is 84 square feet. Well, we know the height. It gave it to us. That'll be 7. We're looking for the base to equal the full area of 84 square feet. What times 7 is 84? I want you to pause the video and figure out what times 7 would equal 84. Think about your multiples of 7. Now, I was able to figure this one out by knowing 12 times 7 was 84. Now, if you don't know your multiples of 7 and you didn't know 7 times 12 is 84, you could have used your clues of what you do know. I know 7 times 10 is 70, and I know 7 times 11 is 77. So I can just add 7 more to 77, and that would be 7 times 12 would equal 84. That's one way you can figure it out. So 12 times 7 is 84, and that is correct. All right, so let's go ahead and look at our back two questions on our homework. Number one says the area of a rectangular photograph is 35 square inches. I'm going to put 35 in the middle of my rectangle. If the width of the photo is 5 inches, 
how tall is going to be the photo? So your job is to find your base times height will equal your area of 35. And for question two, Natalie uses 112 inches of blue yarn as a border around her rectangular bulletin board. If the bulletin board is 36 inches wide, how long is it? All right, so if you know that it's 36 inches wide and you want to know the length, um, figure it out if you know the total distance around is 112. And then when you're done, I want you to go ahead and assess yourself. Please go ahead and assess yourself. If you feel like you're a novice, please place number one at the top corner of your homework sheet. Number two, apprentice. You're starting to get it, but you need me to coach you through every problem. Three, practitioner. You can do this by yourself, but you might get stuck a few times. Or expert. You really understand this so well, you could teach it to your partner in class. Okay, here are your questions again. Whoa, she did come back. <laughs> And go ahead and do the last four problems at the bottom. Um, on number six, you will need to simplify your answer because the answer you get won't be one of your choices. However, if you simplify the answer you have, you will have the correct answer. All right. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow. There she is again. All right. Bye, Casey. <laughs> oh, no. She's going crazy.